Hi, everybody. I am from the internet and from the United States, and I'm uh, I'm most known for my YouTube videos. And so I'm going to show you a selection of just a few of them, and I'll talk a little bit about their significance to me. And I don't know if you should call these videos poetry or not, but they're what happens when a poet decides to start making YouTube videos. And so anyway, I'm just going to start by playing my most well-known video. It's called Make Something Beautiful Before You Are Dead. It was uh, a 2012 video, so it's four years old now, but... Um, it's the video that I'm most well known for. It starts off real ridiculous, and then later it sort of gets a little bit more serious, and it catches a lot of people off guard. But anyway, this is make something beautiful before you are dead. I'm gonna find the best deal. You know, you'll give me some options where I can shop. I'm gonna really look around. I'm gonna be like, you know what? There's a better deal. Two words, jackass. Dog the bounty hunter. Two words, jackass. YOLO! Speak softly and carry a big stick. This is advice from Theodore Telly Roosevelt, the inventor of Teletubbies. I'm Queen Latifah. Okay, I'm gonna put my dick into a juice press. My grandma is definitely working on her Pinterest following. This is a fucked up tree! This is three trees coming out of the same tree! This tree is fucking stupid! Now that's a true skill set. Bounty hunter. Nice. As the Marxists say, superstructure reinforces the freaking base. Get me in control of ABC Family and I will fuck this country up! I like the way that it focuses in and out and it kind of floats around the screen. That you are here. That life exists and identity. In high school, I did get into arts in one sense. I was playing in bands a lot. and I played mostly in death metal bands and I mostly played drums. Um, although, I was a vocalist in a couple of the bands, and when I did live shows with those bands, that was when I really think I brought something unique to the table. You know, I would be running all over the stage, and I'd be making jokes in between songs and stuff. And there was one point when my brother, my older brother, told me, like, because he knew I was pretty serious about the music stuff and that I sort of like wanted to be like a rock star or something. But he was like, you know, if you really want to, to, to do music, you, you probably would do better as like a front man in a band rather than a drummer. Because it's like, I was, I was all right as a drummer. I did the job. But like as a vocalist, I really think I brought something unique because I was like talking and stuff. And so I think that's something that I still get to use like in my live shows and even in the videos. It's like charisma or whatever, my ability to improvise and like bring this energy through what I say. That was like a prequel to what I did with my videos. You may contribute a verse. Oh God, I love hugging. I love hugging people. I like staying up all night working on something I'm, that makes me happy. Gibbous moon, crescent moon. I love stars. I want cake. I love the days after rain. I like dancing. I like kissing you. I want to kiss you. I want to kiss you in a baseball field. I want to kiss you in the baseball field in the middle of the night. In the tunnel of the jungle gym when it's dark out and we can't see. I'm going to bring cookies and juice and we're going to eat them both. So I ended up doing an MFA program for poetry, um, which is the graduate degree for poetry. So I already had the creative writing undergrad degree. And I don't remember exactly which one it was because I did a few poems like this, but it was a poem that like sort of set up this scene. Like I was like talking about some worms or something and like sort of like getting some nature imagery going in like the first four lines or so and then the last line was just this found line from like iron gym turns your doorway into a gym in minutes or something it was like this line from an advertisement or it was something like that that just sort of made this like cheap joke in, the, in my teacher's opinion and and what she wrote on the paper was like <clears throat> save this stuff for your blog and I was like thinking critically about this at that time because I was finding stuff online that where I was actually becoming more interested in that. I was looking at memes online and some blogs that do comedy and like YouTube stuff and I was like you know what some of this stuff actually has a similar sense of humor as me or a similar uh, worldview that it's promoting or something but they're reaching many more people oftentimes online than a poetry book does and they're meeting then they're and they're reaching them every day like in the feed or like there's people who come back to the website every day and that seemed incredibly powerful to me I was like 
this is like a, a relation they have a relationship with their readers that is like so active and engaged um so i was thinking about like the power of blogs and then she says this thing save this for your blog and i'm just like a blog is potentially so much more powerful than all these literary journals that you you know submit to and all that it just seemed really oblivious and so at that time it was seemed just like very clear to me that the establishment was so behind on this stuff that there was room to like to like sort of identify even harder as like an internet poet or an internet writer and sort of like be the antithesis of what the establishment was, you know? I spent a lot of time in 2011 and 2012 um, around that time when I was finishing or, you know, when I was in the MFA program but sort of sick of it and then the period immediately after it too, I really spent like most of most days just replying to people's comments and starting conversations on the internet and really like through like like if I post something out on the internet a lot of people won't really care necessarily but if I go and talk to you and you have a message and a notification from me or maybe you have 10 notifications from me because I went on your page and liked everything and then commented on a few things it's like people are like who is this Steve Rogenbuck person and like that was how I built my first bit of my audience was just like individually interacting with people and stuff um, and people really appreciated that and there it, it really had like a very active community feeling from the beginning like I think actually in later years like 2014 even to the present I have more total reach now but in terms of like the amount of like interaction and like people making like fan art of me and stuff I feel like even like 2012 was like the height of that because I was doing so much interaction people knew that it was like I was paying attention and would appreciate that type of thing and stuff and so really that interaction is very powerful I think a lot of people overlook that they think if you know the way to use the internet is to like get some big thing that goes viral or that like a you know a big thing that reposts you or something but it's like if you just use it individually to contact hundreds of people like on a daily basis it can like build such community wow beautiful fields that have cows grazing wow my grandpa's in the top 10 smallest cocks we're talking small ripley's believe it or not that it's that small of a dick back in my grandfather's day they didn't have yolo we have yolo we have to harness this gift yolo tree trunk come on tree trunk live come on you little shit baby come on tree trunk live your life oh wait you can't live your life because you're dead right because everything dies because everybody dies. I'm not trying to be sad. Your cat's gonna die. Your dog only lives once. Guess who you can't hug when you're dead? Everyone. Usually it's like 100% improvised or it's mostly improvised. And so, and I know that I'm gonna cut out a lot of it. And so what I do is I really take risks and I really do like, I just go into these voices. I start saying wacky stuff. I start yelling something. And like, I know that not all of it is going to be good. In fact, like I will oftentimes record an hour and only use like one minute of final footage once it's cut tightly. So when I'm recording, when I'm performing for the videos, it's like I'm writing the first draft of a poem. And I, it's kind of like automatic writing, this concept where you just, you write as fast as you can and you don't even like try to censor at all what comes out. And then you can just go back later and take the few good parts, you know? And I like to be alone doing it because I don't want people to hear all the stuff that I say that's not funny and stuff that I, I would feel embarrassed that like I'm trying to make some joke but it doesn't really work out. Or, or I try to make some inspirational rant but it doesn't feel quite right. I kind of feel like corny when I'm doing it or something. So like I try to find places where I'm isolated when recording the videos. And so a lot of times I go out somewhere to record like in the woods or on a beach or something and I do not know what I'm going to say. Maybe I have a very loose subject in mind but oftentimes then I don't even end up talking about that subject and the way that I edit is that I just sort of watch the video over and over and I cut out the parts that are that feel slow or feel boring and stuff and what kept happening with these videos is that I would make a video where I was talking about a subject 
But what was more interesting to me was those side jokes or those like poetic tangents that I went on and stuff. And so over time, I sort of allowed myself to keep cutting out all those explanatory slower parts. And it became just this thing where it was like this sequence of very tightly cut like asides and jokes and tangents and poetic rants and stuff. And then it became a thing where it's I'm not even attempting to talk about a subject anymore usually. It's just like a bunch of different voices and all this stuff. Seriously, humans are fucking up. Some people die because they don't have food. Some people don't have homes. Almost everybody wakes up and does something they don't like. We can do better than this. Human beings can do better than this. Rise up, you frickers! You are literally gonna die. Make something beautiful before you are dead. Ah, yeah, frickers! The rain is beautiful. Rain is beautiful. Crap. What's it like? It's fucking beautiful. I think that part of my, my, of my output where I'm like, oh my God, you're alive and it's weird, is something that was very influenced by Walt Whitman. And I think like in certain poems of his, he had this sort of persona of like, the trees are great and the rocks are amazing and the water is oh my god it's so holy and like it's sort of this thing of like raising everything to the level of holiness and like seeing like the the beauty of everything in this intense way that it's like when i read walt whitman for the first time it really like i feel like it like woke me up in a way that i like was seeing things with this awe or this like wonder and this like <laughs> amazement and like just not taking things for granted the same way it's like sort of it shifted everything a little bit so you just see it from a different angle and you see it anew and you see the weirdness of it all and like knowing that he had that effect on me made it so that I know that I could have that effect on other people and that like it sort of just became what I naturally wanted to do and like Immediately after finding Whitman's work, this was like 2008, so it was when I was still in undergrad before I had done the MFA or any of that, um, I started writing stuff that was very obviously influenced by Whitman. And then later other influences came in, the internet stuff, the humor in different ways. I focused less on Whitman. Then I came back to it a little bit later along with Lil B the Bass God, who is another persona who really has this like, oh wow, bugs are very weird. This is very weird and like but Lil B blends it with the internet culture and the internet humor in a different way so it gave a sort of a different context but it also brought back the Whitman for me and anyway that's definitely one of the strong voices in a lot of my work and I think it's the one that has really been the most important to a lot of people you know these these moments where I'm sort of pouring out about the world and like sort of almost modeling a way of looking at the world that most people don't typically see. The next thing I'm going to play is another funny video, but it's a little bit more of a sustained persona or character or, or topic. And so this one is called The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Podcasting. My intention is sort of to put this on YouTube and to have somebody see the title, Beginner's Guide to Podcasting, and then they click on it, and then it's kind of something a lot weirder than they would expect. Um, so it's sort of, at the beginning, it sort of takes on this thing like it's going to be a beginner's guide to podcasting, but it doesn't really stay with that very long at all. Um, <clears throat> and it's sort of, there's this tough guy persona that I am doing throughout, and to me, it's really funny. This is Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Podcasting, uh, which I made last November. This is a tip video for everybody who's out there looking to start a podcast. Number one tip, shut the f*** up. I hate going to hell, man. Why you gotta have me do this, man? F*** you, man. This is the Get to Hell Podcast. Oh, it's the Get to Hell Podcast? I can't, no, dude. I didn't want to go to hell. 
No! I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't want to go to hell. Oh, man. My podcast is doing so horribly, man. I can't take this anymore, man. I can't take it. Oh, sh- dude. Oh, God. Mom. I think the thing that I love in poetry and art a lot is surprise. And, like, if I can say something that is, like, very unexpected to me and use a voice that's like, what? Who would say that, you know? A lot of times, somebody once told me that what they really liked about the voices and stuff and the way that the videos are cut is, like, there's all these little excerpts from what you could imagine to be longer conversations. A lot of times, I'll be looking off camera and I'll be, like, talking to somebody who's not even there, you know? But I'll be, like as if I'm responding to somebody. And a lot of times when I'm recording the video, it will be like, I'll be like having that like conversation, like as if, but then when I go through the footage, I decide only this line is funny. So I cut out the rest around it and it's like out of context. And I, I like that there's just so much there that you could dig deeper into. A lot of times people will watch a video of mine and and they might say like, what the hell did I just watch? I like that response. I also like the people who even do like it and do feel like they get it. Then they watch it again later and they, and they notice a line that they totally missed the first time. Or maybe they were laughing over a different line, but it was so fast moving that they entirely missed the line right after it or something. And so there's a lot there. I think it creates more replay value. I think my favorite bands are the bands where you can listen to it a lot of times before it gets old rather than the bands where it's really catchy the first time, you know? So I really like to have that depth there and that potential for replay value. So I like, I like the amount of surprise. I like that it's not very easy to pick out these two easy characters or something, but it's like a whole blend of different characters. This one is my favorite video that I've made this year. This is, I am not responsible for anything the moon does this month. My whack-a-mole game is very hot right now. And I do have a pup. Don't take this the wrong way, but I run a self-sucking blog. Dude, this is pretty sweet, but I'm gonna go home and self-suck, dude. I gotta go, man. <sighs> I am not responsible for anything the moon does this month. You know that I've been critiquing the moon for a long time on its style. Society would be way different if we didn't hide everybody's poop. Not saying it would be better. Well, it's the self-sucking demographic. This ain't a documentary about birdcock. Watch this footage. This is actually Tim Allen fighting someone with his bare hands and he, he's vicious. You sound like a buffoon, Johnny. You're using your voice all wrong. <laughs> I saw that Ted Cruz ate a booger on TV. Dude, I would eat way more of my own waste to become president than Ted Cruz. Together, we can stop the annihilation of the earth by the rich elite. So I think some people are surprised when they meet me in person that I'm not like yelling the whole time or something because the videos are quite intense and fast and loud like that. But I think the reason for that is this, this impulse that I have that when I know that people are giving me their attention, I feel like I have to entertain them or I have to like be worth their time. I really feel like I respect people's time and that's partly why the videos are edit cut so tight together. Part of it's because I like that surprise and I like keeping their a lot of depth and like weirdness in there. But like also it's because like I want to pack a lot of laughs or a lot of value into like one minute, you know? And so like when, when an artist makes a video where they're just like sitting there eating or like sitting there like doing like something and it's like the concept is that they're not doing anything, to me I'm like, okay, cool. But it's like people people's time is valuable, you know? So like, I'm not really gonna expect somebody to sit there and watch it, you know? I really crank up the intensity, you know, on the internet. I really make it a louder, more wacky, intense version of who I am. Some people don't see how fucking rare this is. You ever think about what it takes for a planet to produce life? You ever think about what it takes for an animal to exist? If you don't got good dirt, you don't got plants, and you don't got animals, you asshole. Human beings are animals, you fucking asshole. Human beings are fucking animals. We shit in little bowls of water, but we're fucking animals. I don't want to waste my life chasing a fucking bullshit, selfish idea of what success means.
It's really interesting to think about whether the videos are poetry, quote unquote, whether they're poetry. I think you definitely can view them from that way. And I've made the argument at various points that they can be viewed that way because I think if you look at the history of avant-garde poetry, you look at what the Dadaists did and the Surrealists and minimalist poets who did incredibly short poems and visual poets who do, you know, stuff that looks more like graphic design or visual art. And um, there are precedents for calling what I do poetry. And I think a, an exciting way to look at it to me is to not just view the, the videos as poetry, but to view the entire output of all the social media as poetry because looking at like all the interaction on Twitter and all the you know the comments on Facebook and the images too and just like seeing it as like this massive output so I think there's ways of viewing it all as poetry but the thing is also you don't have to view it that way to appreciate it there's people who come to my videos who don't read any other poetry who maybe don't know that I identify as a poet or whatever, and they just like me as a YouTuber, you know? And I think that's just as valid, and I think that's just as powerful sometimes. So I don't know whether to really make the argument or how much to make the argument or, or whatever. It can be interesting to talk about sometimes, but ultimately it's not the ultimate point to me. You know, the point is like the impact that I have on other people and expressing myself how I want to express myself. And it's like, if that takes me in another direction that is even further from poetry, then I'll go there because that's what really matters to me, not poetry. 